There are a few different ways to hide layer content on your document. The two most common non-destructive methods are either clipping or masking. Clipping involves placing one object inside another. I'll select the rectangle tool and click drag to create a rectangle on this magazine spread to resemble a Polaroid photo. To clip an object inside this rectangle, I'm going to press V to select the move tool and drag this photo of a leaf into position on top of the rectangle. Then I'll go to the Layers panel and click-drag the image layer over the rectangle layer. There are three drop zones highlighted by the blue area. Over the thumbnail, a line under the layer, or the whole layer. I'll make sure I'm offering it to the name or the centre of the layer so the whole box is highlighted blue. Then I'll release the mouse button. Now I can expand the parent layer to view the child layer that's nested inside. The parent layer becomes a window to the child layer. Any areas of the child layer which lie outside of the parent layer are hidden. I can select the child layer to adjust its position and centre the leaf in the rectangle. And I can select the parent layer and move it and resize it. The child layer will move and scale with it to keep the correct aspect ratio to the parent layer. If I don't want this behaviour, I can go to the context toolbar and enable lock children. Now I can move and scale the parent layer without moving the child layer. I like how it looked before, so I'll just use Command and Z on Mac or Ctrl and Z on Windows to undo these last few actions. Both vector and pixel layers can be clipped inside or be the clipping object. You can also clip more than one layer inside another. For example, I have a product photo and I want to put it inside the second Polaroid frame and I also want to add these vector leaves to create a shadow effect. First, like before, I'll move the photo into position, then I'll drag the image layer and offer it to the name of the second rectangle, and then release. I'll just adjust the position to centre the bottle in the window. Now I'll create the shadows using these vector ferns. I'll select one of the ferns and click the Layer Effects button. I'll enable a Gaussian blur, and increase the radius to around 9. I'll make sure Scale with Object is enabled, as I might want to resize it later. I'll close the Effects dialog, and then copy the effect to the other fern by dragging the FX icon to the other fern layer. Now I'll hold Shift and select them both, and reduce the opacity to 40 by pressing 4. I'll position them over the second rectangle and then drag their layers over the Rectangle 2 layer that already contains the product photo. To help it integrate with the image, I'll change their blend modes to Multiply. Now we have both an image and vector curves clipped inside the same shape. For the third example, I'll show you how you can clean up vector and raster objects in your illustrations. Here we have a ginkgo leaf, and lots of lines that need neatening up. Rather than trim each curve, which is destructive, I can clip them all inside the thicker curve that outlines the leaf. I'll select one of the thin curves, and then go to the Select menu. Go down to Select Same, and choose the Stroke Weight and Equal to select all the tiny strokes. Then I'll go to the Layers panel and click-drag them and offer them to the Outline layer that I've named Ginkgo, and then Release. Now the curves are only visible up to the path of the leaf outline. I can also clip pixel layers inside vector objects to add shading with clean edges. Instead of dragging layers into the clipping layer, I can go to the insertion modes near the top right. Now making sure my outline is selected, I can change the insertion preference to insert within the selection. I can go to the bottom of the layers panel and click add pixel layer and it will be created inside the leaf outline. Now I can go to the Pixel Persona and select the Paintbrush tool. I'll open the Brushes panel and choose a soft round brush. I'll make sure my colour is set to black and I'll press 2 to lower the opacity of the brush to 20%. Now I can brush around the edges of the leaf and it will only be visible inside the outline. I can isolate my pixel layer at any time to see the brushwork by holding Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and clicking on the pixel layer's thumbnail. Selecting another layer or Option clicking the thumbnail again will return to the normal view. 
Masking is slightly different. It allows us to determine which parts of a layer are shown or hidden in the document by restricting their visibility. Masking is mainly used for applying adjustments and filters selectively to certain areas of an image or to composite parts of separate images into one main composition. For this flower, I can use a mask to remove the background. First, I'll select the image. Then I'll choose the selection brush from the tools panel and go to the context toolbar and enable soft edges. This will soften the edges of the selection and help us to achieve a better result. I can use the square brackets to increase or decrease the brush size to make selections quickly, but also make sure that any tiny areas are included in the selection boundary. If I accidentally select part of the background, I can hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows while I click drag to remove from the selection and push the boundary back to the petals. Once I'm happy with the selection, I'll go to the bottom of the Layers panel and click Mask Layer. Now I can press Command and D on Mac or Control and D on Windows to deselect the image. Now this is ready to be placed into a composition. Using a mask is a non-destructive workflow. If we look at the Layers panel and hide the mask layer, we can see the background of the image is still there. If I hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and click the mask thumbnail, we can view the mask. When you view a mask, you'll either see white, which shows layer content, or black, which hides the layer from view. In this case, the white area is over the flower, so it is visible, and the background is black, so it is hidden. Grayscale values in between white and black will act as semi-transparency. You can also create objects and then turn them into masks. I'll press delete to remove this mask layer so I can show you another way we can use masks. This time, I'll select the paintbrush tool and open the brushes panel and choose a brush. I'll open the list of categories and select the dry media options. And I'll select the first round chalk brush. This will work with any color, so to demonstrate this, I'll choose red. Now I'll increase the brush size and paint over the lotus. It's important to point out that I've not painted on the lotus layer itself. Because I didn't have a layer selected, a new pixel layer was created for me. Now I can use this pixel layer as a mask. When a pixel layer becomes a mask, it will use the alpha channel values rather than the color data. So the places where I've brushed will show the layer content regardless of color. Anywhere that I haven't painted will block visibility to the layer. To turn this into a mask layer, I'll click drag it to the lotus flowers layer and offer it to the thumbnail and then release the mouse button. The pixel layer has become a mask and now has a little mask icon in the corner of its thumbnail. I can continue to add to the mask by adding more paint, or I can hold E to temporarily switch to the Erase Brush tool and remove the mask. Masks can be really useful when working with filters and adjustment layers, as you can determine which parts of the image the filter or adjustment affects. I'll delete this mask on the Layers panel and add a black and white adjustment layer. To do this, I'll open the list of adjustments at the bottom of the Layers panel and select Black and White. Adjustment layers inherently have their own mask layers built in, so there's no need to add a separate mask layer to them. If I start painting black onto the adjustment layer, it will block the black and white effect, allowing the colour to show through. I can solo the layer by Option or Alt clicking on the thumbnail to view the mask and make sure I don't have any gaps in my black brushwork. For some tasks, clipping or masking are both viable options and can appear to achieve the same result. I'll just move back to the designer persona for this next example. Here I have two words and I want to put a picture inside the text. For this, I'll use this pebble image. I'll drag it onto my document and create a duplicate using Command and J on Mac or Control and J on Windows one for the word mask and the other for the word clipping. First, I'll drag one over the word mask. Then I'll go to the Layers panel and offer the artistic text layer that says mask to the thumbnail of the pebble layer. In this case, the text becomes the mask. Next, I'm going to clip the other image inside the word clipping. Like before, I'll drag the pebble image over the word, but this time, I'll drag the image layer and offer it to the center of the text layer so the whole layer is highlighted blue. 
Now the pebble image is inside and the text layer becomes a clipping object. So here we've been able to use different techniques to achieve the same effect. In some cases, it may come down to personal preference. In others, it may be the properties or behaviours connected with each workflow that determine which technique is best. So that was a look at clipping and masking techniques. Thanks for watching.